Are you figuring on a special evening out? Maybe some seafood in mind? Well, if so, someone's been picking out your entree in a place like this. Fresh fish, that's up next on Chef Sophia. So we can all take some home and pick up the Fish almost requires a, a softer, gentler approach. When you write a list of the most skilled, most prominent seafood chefs in North America, the name Rick Moonen shows up. Moonen is the impresario of restaurant RM in Manhattan. When a few years ago, restaurateurs across America joined forces, refusing to serve certain endangered fishes, it was Rick Moonen who was among the organizers. When I first started to go to the Fulton Market, I was just, you know, a nobody. You know, I was just some guy that was in the way of this hustle and bustle. I wasn't purchasing anything. I was just asking a lot of annoying questions at, at a time where these guys were at their height of their day. But it didn't stop me. I would see some fantastic fish. And years would pass by, and I started to see uh, the quality of the fish, the size of the fish change. And it just it dawned on me that we've got problems going on. For that activism, and for his restaurant style and his cooking, Rick Moonen is well known indeed. And now to catch one of the prizes of the sea, the wild striped bass. Chef Moonen is here with his buddies, John Papalardo, and the man with the boat, Captain Mike Abdo. The three are sailing off Cape Cod, angling for striped bass. Let me run back up here, guys, for a minute, and I'll turn around and come right back. They will use a circle hook. The fish cannot swallow it, and it removes easily for catch and release. You put this together? Yep. Here you go. Huh? That's sexy. Isn't that cute? Isn't That's that sexy. Cute? You got the pink dress on? Pink dress, yeah, we give him a little dress. Ready? This little guy here represents anything that scuttles along the bottom that a fish like a striped bass, being a bottom feeder, would feed on. Right. So this is what I want you to do. All right, it's on the bottom now. I want you to go like this. Just like that, you see it? Yeah. Nice and short, sure. thumb on the reel, hand like this. Just like that, that's all I want you to do. Jig, jig, jig. There you go. There you go, you'll hit the bottom, she'll catch, everything will catch up. Two hands, John. You know they're here because the birds are here chasing the bait around. Uh, there you go, uh, damn. That's on. Got one, John? Yeah, had a boy. Ishan! Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Here we go. Come on. That's my baby. He's a little guy. A little small, but it's nice. Hey, small, cute. Yeah, beautiful we'll find it is. some bigger ones. That's the real deal. Well, a while. This is a success story right here. We took it off the market and that rebounded. Look like, how well incredible. it's rebounded, nice and healthy. It's a gorgeous fish. It's and great eating. on it right here, and the lice swim around on the fish, on the slime on the fish, and that and it makes it healthy, and it keeps it's it healthy. nice and healthy, keeps the skin nice and clean, free of parasites. Give me a little kiss. See ya. Right in. Get bigger. There she goes. Not only is catch and release in vogue among sport fishermen, it's essential in commercial fishing, for the less than mature must be thrown back. Hey Mike, what's the deal with the commercial rod fishing? Yeah, around here. Well, the state says that we have to catch these fish commercially with a rod and a reel. So everybody will have an equal chance. You don't want to use a net on these fish because they're a big school fish and you'd get up a whole school of fish in the net, keep reeling. Ah, there you go, come on. So everybody's allowed to be on the same equal footing using a rod and a reel. Nice. And this way here, we catch each fish individually, and they're not exerted or exhausted, and we put them back in the water fast. We got another big one right here. Let me let this little fish go. All right, we got another one right here. Here's another almost commercial. Uh, yeah, I will. That could be. That could be a commercial keeper. Let me ask you something, though. Fish. How do you yeah. make money doing this, then? I mean, this is, this is a, well, lot of work. It's a lot of work. 
So how many fish you got to catch a day in order to make you it You got to catch 20, 30 of these size fish or better to make money. To break even? Well, uh, to break even, 10 fish to break even. Right. 20 fish for a private, 30 fish a decent private. The state allows us to catch 40. Then you can buy sexy sunglasses like the one you You don't get to buy sexy sunglasses <laughs> on these fish. Let's measure this guy here and see if he's legal. He's legal. Nice. He's 35 inches and he's legal. How old is this fish? Eight this years? This fish here is probably about eight, nine years old. They're a slow growing fish. They, uh, Look at that with the fins out like that. It's gorgeous. Pretty absolutely fish. Gorgeous. Absolutely pretty, pretty fish. You, this, oh, is this is sushi. This is sushi. This is sushi grade. This is sushi, sushi grade. Sushi, sushi. <laughs> Hi, little fish. Go home now. Go home. Don't bite nobody's lure till Friday, Sunday for me. I actually <laughs> stay away from everybody here. Go ahead. Back to the bottom. If we conserve, let them go down to the nursery and have puppies one more time, it just puts more fish in the fishery for Absolutely. next year. So, Mike, how long have you been doing this? For about 5,000 years. You look great, I'm man. pretty good for 5,000, <laughs> aren't I? My grandfather was one of the original beach buggy boys uh, that fished on Cape Cod for striped bass back in the 40s. This is like an uncertain profession. Yes, sir. It's a lot of hard work. Yes, sir. Hard to make money. Yes, sir. Everybody's giving you regulations. Yes, sir. Why do you do it? Love. One word. I can feel the love. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't love what you're doing, you won't enjoy yourself. Ain't that the truth? Look at all the birds there. Oh, there, you there go. we go. Fish oh. on. Woo! JP. Yeah, it's probably a skate. Nice. Good. That's good. Okay. Come up here. Oh, There's some nice wings on that, baby. Skate is an awesome eating fish. Brown butter and capers. Brown butter, baby. Yep. And capers. Brown butter and capers. That's the way to I go. I need my glove because they're like a little prickly Look at the mouth. There. Look at the mouth on them. Look at them. Like lips. Give them a kiss. You don't this want This one, you don't want to kiss. <laughs> you don't want your fish. He's kind of got a little. Thus the gloves. Pointed nose. Ugly, off it goes. There he goes. He's Straight gone. Down. This tough, heavy, tasty fish, so important in the human diet, came dangerously close to extinction. It was heavily overfished in the late 20th century until fishermen, government prompted by chefs and conservationists, settled on limits in various waters. The resurgence of the striped bass here and elsewhere is a classic environmental success story. Tell me a little bit about the, you know, the, uh, the striped bass population and how it's come back so strong and why. Uh, years ago, they took up a management plan so we would stop harvesting striped bass at the great rate that we were doing. But am I Not wrong in saying that it was really taken out of the market because of pollution? Pollution had a lot to do with it, especially down in the Chesapeake Bay area. Right. The farmers down there used to spray the fields with pesticides, and when it would rain, the pesticides would wash into the ecosystem, and then the little eggs in the lava wouldn't develop correctly. So by slowing that down, slowing down everybody fishing, especially the commercial fishing aspect, right. it really helped these How long did fish. that have, take? It took about 10 years. But in 10 years? 10 years, the fishery has come back. Strong, right? A lot stronger than the good old days. So These are the good old days so, right now. So what we're fishing for right here is a great example of how fish rebound. Of how a management plan, if done correctly, works. That's simple. Right. That's why we can do this with a conscious. All right, that's baby. That's a Oh, baby. Get in the boat. Now, that's a fish, that's Mike. A, that's, that's a, a fish. That's a keeper. That's a big keeper. 35 okay. inches, probably 17, 16, 17 pounds, 18 pounds. It's a beautiful gun. Look at that. Beautiful fish, isn't it? To have it how for would you dinner. Cook, how would you cook that? I would up? fillet the guy, take the fillet okay. off him, cut him in portions for size to eat. Skin on, skin off. Skin off. Oh, actually, scales off, skin on. Right, yeah. exactly. That's the way I like then it. Then I would take and I put him in some Italian dressing. Uh huh. Some good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let it marinate for eight hours, or you make your own. Same thing with the oil and on herbs and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I would take and I would put them on a grill, hot grill, skin side down first. Yep. See, we're a little fancier, you know, okay. what we do. But it's really all simple stuff as well. 
the less you do with it, the more integrity of the actual flavor of the fish you're going to maintain. You know, mm -hmm. we make these chive whip mashed potatoes, mm -hmm. and I put and I just and I grill the fish up same way you do. I don't marinate it. That's all, just to you know keep it pretty plain because then you get that meaty, sweet, delicious mm -hmm. fishy. It's not fishy, but I mean mm -hmm. the really nice flavor. It's flaky as well because it's a dense fish, and I make a truffle vinaigrette. Real simple, you know, it's just some, I'm hungry. some shallots, a little sherry wine vinegar, a little ch reduced chicken stock. I emulsify it with some vegetable oil and truffle oil. You're in. I'm coming to the Call restaurant. Call it a day. Yeah. If he's not out on the water casting a lure, then you'll usually find Chef Moonen here at the Fulton Fish Market on the East River early in the morning. These are great eating, man. Look at that. This, 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 is, what's, this is what's great, man. I used to go fishing for these with my dad when we were kids. You go. This is every kid who grew up in like the New York, New Jersey area, this you know was what? their first fishing trip right here. I think there. it was like the shiny, look at that, wait. Could it be fresher? No, look at that. <laughs> That's a fresh fish. Huh? I love Nothing that. Nothing like a little rig of mortise in the morning. Yeah. These are the ones that you're talking about, right? Here's the, the line that's broken up. These, these, are, uh, these are bred with what they call white bass. They took a wild striped bass and they, uh, they uh, bred them again. You can just see the whacked out shape of and it. You see the hump? That's yeah. from where they lay on top of each other in the pens. If you notice, they don't all have the hump. That's right. That's where they stack in the pen. To me, these don't even taste like wild striped bass. There you go. Yeah, beautiful, man. Fresh. I was just catching these the other day, man. Well, these are local. These are from New York. Um, you know, the bass seasons go from state to state. Wild striped bass is very regulated in the market. Each bass caught and sold has to be tagged with the state that it was caught in and the fisherman's number. Yeah. You can see that they're beautiful, though. You can see the eyes is still oh, nice. Super fresh. Look at the gills. Yep. Bright red. Everything's wet. With the striped bass, you can tell these are wild striped bass because the lines go unbroken. Right, right, right. Each state has their own size limits on the bass. So. In New York State, I believe the commercial length is 28 inches, so this is obviously more than that. Yeah. But these are beauties. It's a good time of year. This is a nice size fish right here. That's a nice size right there. That's a fat one. Tell you what, what's nice about striped bass is they're the perfect combination fish. They're great to catch. They're good fighting fish and probably one of the best eating fish there is. Oh, and this is my, this is one of my favorite fish to and both, for both. I've had this dish at your restaurant. It's an amazing dish. Uh, I'm gonna show show you how to cook some up. Oh, yeah, wow. well, great. As long as you fillet it for me, because you know I can't do that. Well, you scale it, I'll fillet it. What do you think? Fair enough. <laughs> Kirby, could you scale this for me? <laughs> it's always good to see a species come back. Yep. Yeah. And you're kidding me? And they're a lot of fun to play with, and, too. And it has a lot to do with awareness. You, you know better than anybody you know, how important it is to protect the resource. Yep. You know, and here's proof. If you take care, um, you know, the species will take care of itself if you give it a chance. Right here, baby. This is the last wild frontier. Right here. Space. <laughs> Well, let's get a weight on this. 14.2 pounds. Two pounds. Give you nice thick fillets. Yeah, it's nice. Beautiful fish. Love it. Let's take this puppy home. One fish bag, ready to go. Beautiful thing. Thank you, Chef. You the man. Always a pleasure. Love you. <laughs> I'm going to prepare a simple dish with the striped bass. What I'm going to do is make a, a pomery mustard potato salad, and uh, we're going to serve that room temperature, and then we're going to put the warm fish right on top of it. I'm going to poilet it, which is a type of sautéing, but when you're constantly basting it with some butter, and it really gives it this really juicy um, shine to it when you're finished. And uh, on top of that, or around that, excuse me, I'm going to do a, uh, a, a white truffle foam almost, you know, like a, like a light... Um, a nage is the word that we use in kitchens. We like to play around with different words so that we're not redundant, but it's really all the same concept. We, we, we zap it up with a little handheld blender. It gets some foam on top, gives it some texture. And then I'm gonna put um, on top of the fish is a little bit of just tomato and black truffle. So it's black and white truffle. First thing I wanna do is uh, start the, the cooking process of the striped bass. What I have here is a pre-cut portion. I've taken the, the filet from the striped bass, from the bones, taken the skin off, and just cut out little little four ounce portions of the striped bass. You can see these are the lines that I'm talking about. These are natural seams that contain a decent amount of the fat. 
I would consider striped bass to be a medium fat content. So the butter that we're going to use to baste it with is going to be very helpful in maintaining the moisture and the tenderness of the fish when it's all said and done. What I do is I, I start with a pan that's not screaming hot, but, but hot nonetheless. And we season the striped bass. I use sea salt because I like the, I think it's natural flavoring. And a little bit of pepper on both sides. And I dip it in Wonder of Flour. Okay, so with the medium hot pan, I put a little bit of oil in the bottom just to, to coat the bottom. And I start off with the fish inside this pan, seasoned. Turn the heat up just a touch and add a decent amount of uh, butter to it. And this is going to be the butter that we're going to baste the fish with. Okay, while that's starting to cook, I'm going to assemble the potato salad, which is really simple. These are white russet potatoes that have been peeled, placed in cold water with a pinch of salt. You bring it up to a boil and you cook them until they're just not quite cooked through. I add some uh, pomery mustard, some creme fraiche. If you don't have creme fraiche, you can use sour cream, some thinly sliced shallots. For some acidity, we add sherry vinegar, some salt, and some fresh pepper. I'm going to go back to my fish just for a second. When you start to see the browning on the sides, you start to baste your fish. You turn down the heat just a touch now. Add a little more butter. What's happening in this pan is the part that's touching the pan is, is still continuing to caramelize, and the basting process is just like, like, like basting a turkey. It's keeping it, um, keeping it moist. This butter is hot, so it's not permeating. It's not going through the fish, adding any more fat to the fish. It's just making sure that the amount of fat that's inside the fish is being maintained so it does not dry out. This is the secret. I'm giving you the secret to delicious fish. I add a little bit of salt and pepper to the uh, potato salad. You want it to just barely stick together like that. And that's pretty nice. Keep basting your fish. This is the poile process. Again, you want it to be a gentle process. You want to caramelize because that's where you get the flavor. The butter aids a lot in that caramelization process. You can take a little peek under there to see how it's doing. You can see that it's just starting to caramelize. You want it to continue. The sauce that's going to accompany this fish is basically a mushroom stock with some butter and some truffle oil, OK, white truffle oil. Uh, mushroom stock is uh, basically vegetable stock, which is water, salt, pepper, and a lot, a lot, a lot of vegetables. Usually we use scraps at Restaurant RM, but at home you don't have vegetable scraps. You want to put some onions, some leeks. Use white vegetables. Normally carrots I don't put in there because it colors it. And a lot of mushrooms. Um, just white mushrooms from the, the supermarket, and you, and you reduce it down. You cook it for a long time and let the flavors concentrate, and it, and it creates this, this uh, beautiful vegetable stock, or mushroom stock, really, is what you end up with. Okay, this fish is almost cooked through. I flip it over, and you can see how beautifully caramelized that's becoming. That's two things, it's the butter, the heat, and, some, and the wonder of flour as well. Now what I'll do here, because the pan's hot, is I'll turn the heat right off and just let it kind of coast through the finish. Because the, 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 the heat that's left over in this pan is going to continue the cooking process. And we get to plate up our fish now. 
I like the whole grain mustard because it gives a little bit of crunch to the dish as well because it's got whole mustard seeds that uh, kind of pop in your mouth when you're, when you're, when you're eating it. And it's not so, uh, so powerful. Like a Dijon mustard is very, very powerful and strong and hot. Whereas this mustard is very earthy. And, it, and, it, and along with the earthiness of the potato and the earthiness of the mushrooms, and it's all about, this is really, this is where the earth meets the, earth meets the sea. And it's, uh, it's a delicious dish. Okay. We'll take these potatoes, place them, mound of them in the center of the plate. Kind of flatten it out a little bit. Give yourself a little bed potatoes for your presentation. Okay, now, to make the sauce, this is the butter, truffle oil, and um, reduced stock. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some um, more butter that's gonna make like a, a, definitely gonna be a butter sauce. And then we're gonna kinda take one of our little handheld blenders, and I'm gonna zap it up. And you can see that it starts to create this foam on top. This is what gives it some intrigue and texture. It's not, a, it's not like a shaving cream foam or whipped cream foam. It just gives it some texture to the dish. And it's important that if you want to obtain this kind of a finish, that the liquid that you're adding your butter to is not too, too hot. It should be about 150 degrees. And now the fish is nicely cooked. Put the sauce around the outside. It's kind of like making a cappuccino. It's gonna melt down and you'll get the nice flavor of the sauce, as well as you get some nice foam. This is uh, some tomato salad that's got black truffles, sherry vinegar, salt pepper, and vegetable oil. Drape that over the top. So you've got acidity in the, uh, the tomatoes. You've got acidity in the um, potato salad as well. And a little bit of more truffle oil, just a couple of drops, drizzle over the top. And to finish the dish, garnish it with a couple of pea shoots. On top. And that's the dish. Simple, delicious, earthy. And the thing about this dish is you could, you could serve it with a red wine and it would go very, very well, as well as a good hearty white wine, something that's got some good body to it and good acidity. This is the whole journey of our striped bass. This is the most exciting part, other than catching it, uh, is actually eating it. The smell that I'm standing over right now is unbelievable. Mm. <laughs> our club. Chef Moonen and others produced a recovery of striped bass, a success story. In coming years, though, the chefs, the fisher folk, and people generally will have to worry about all of the fish in all of the seas.